so very good afternoon to all the students of class 10th d we are going to start new chapter the sermon at banaras before sharing the theme uh, before discussing anything with you all i would like to share my screen and uh, let me show you this thing yes is my screen visible to you all clearly fine same please read what is written he has the most who is the most content with the least what does it mean cm do you know no ma'am try to try to uh, explain in your words whatever you could understand with this quote of lord buddha no idea no problem if you are not able to explain it's uh, okay anybody else would like to tell what is the meaning of this quote i will explain no doubt but i want maximum students should participate okay let me tell you he has the most who is most content with the least according to uh, lord buddha that the person uh, you know who is the most satisfied person on this earth whether the person is not having that big luxurious life fine he is not at all having all the amenities of life but he is contented he is satisfied with what he has he is the you can say most uh, you can say the richest person of this earth what we consider richness with money with luxurious life with branded clothing and cars and all that stuff and but what is the fun of having such things if you are not at all satisfied in your life which you, you do not have patience when you are not at all contented fine so jisko bahut kam bhi mil raha hai even then that person is happy with what he has you know a, a person who is eating on the road side but he is happy that at least he got a meal rather than a child sitting in a five star hotel and asking oh my god this dish is not at all good please order another one he is not satisfied with what he is getting in five star hotel see and the person who is eating at the road side is so happy with what he at least he had a meal he is thankful for that to god so he is the most contented person okay so this is what i am saying so lot of fake ids today i am going to mend this accordingly clear any wrong step will lead you to leave the class and not only leave the class i guess maybe leave the school also so behave accordingly and clear so this is one of the famous quotes of lord buddha why i showed you this quote before starting the chapter sermon at banaras this uh, sermonizing you know by the priests by the people of the god by the saints you know when they teach us something uh, which is lifelong fine which can never be erased from our minds so this is these are the n number of you know there are many principles of from lord buddha's life which i could show you but i chose this one only because we need to start this uh, chapter as well clear so before that let me continue Uh, so the characters which mainly are there gautam budh and kiza gautami okay so i have uh, i'm not be allowing more participants today because of the stupidity they are committing here fine uh, gautam budh and kiza gautami we will be reading about this lady very you can say uh, having very poor fate you can say she had one incident in her life and she would be meeting gautam buddha in her life so who was gautam buddha he was not at all known to be a uh, buddha uh, you know when he was born he was born to a royal family as one of the princes fine so he was prince and he had all the amenities of life his name was siddharth 
he was his name was not gautam at at the beginning when he was born so siddharth was name given to him and every luxury of life was available to him he could you know relish each and everything and but you know something happened that changed his life forever he got married also he had a son also but what made uh, siddharth changed into gautam buddh how we uh, you know uh, we will we'll read in this chapter only and kiza gautam is another character fine who will be meeting gautam buddha for a reason so these basically two characters you need to remember then we theme of this chapter is death is inevitable nobody can stop death death has to come everybody will die one or the other day some will go early and some will go late but death is inevitable nobody can stop it even the richest person on this earth will die the poorest will also do same grieving doesn't give us peace of mind grieving what do you mean by grieving you know something bad happens to us we keep on crying a death is there destruction is there a loss is there a pain is there then we you know start grieving for that thing it doesn't give us peace of mind it will extract happiness out of your life so rather than cribbing about the things rather than grieving move on accept the reality and move on reality should be accepted accordingly clear then sorrows death and destruction are part and parcel of the life clear nobody can escape sorrows death and destruction which are inevitable they have to come every person has to go through one or the other uh, you can say thing in life so these are the themes clear Yes, beta. Screen is visible to you all. The sermon at Benares. How Gautam Buddha started sermonizing other. How he, you know, uh, became a saint. You can say or saintly persona. That is a story in itself. Yeah, that is all different. But earlier he was just like us. He was born as a simple human being, but uh, something happened that changed his life. So we will be reading. So what is a sermon? Firstly, let me tell you. Please write down. Uh, sermon is actually a religious discourse. You know, when you go to visit some saint or some saintly persona or a monk or a priest in that way, or a father in the church anybody can sermonize you anybody can give you discourse or religious discourse mending your life or mending your ways okay so a sermon is actually it is a religious discourse which is given publicly to you it can be to given to one person or a group of person or a group of people also clear so uh, at a place of worship or at any place so these are the you can say this is the basic definition of this is different uh, from the lecture and you know because it is religious in nature so that makes it a sermon clear to all chali let's start the discussion now so in this beta uh, what is a sermon we got to know and meanings we will be reading side by side uh, whenever they will be coming to and now we are going to read about the characters still students are joining you see this is the not uh, the right time when i would be allowing the students to attend the class let's continue reading so gautam buddha 563 before christ and 483 before christ so this is the uh, period they have uh, estimated period they have mentioned fine gautam buddha began life as a prince named siddharth gautam please underline this he was a he was born as a prince in northern india at 12 he was sent away for schooling in the hindu sacred scriptures and four years later he returned home to marry a princess so at 12 at the age of 12 year old he was sent away for schooling fine and he was sent away to you know at, during those times there were no many subjects they people you know had values and they would send their kids to read scriptures and religious things and four years later he returned home means at the age of Add up four and twelve. 
16 fine at the age of 16 uh, he returned home he got married you know children uh, to you can say people would get married their sons and daughters at very young age so they had a son and lived for 10 years as befitted uh, royalty so when he was about 25 to 26 you can say estimated age when he was about 25 the prince heretofore shielded from the sufferings of the world while out hunting chanced upon a sick man then an aged man then a funeral procession and finally a monk begging for alms chanced upon means came across by chance so by chance he saw these uh, you can say sorrows of the world he saw a funeral procession somebody died he was so you know touched by seeing this he was so much affected then he saw a monk was begging of alms mangra bheek mangra bachke then he saw a sick man then he saw an aged man you know working hard to get basic amenities of life so siddharth at that time i'm, I'm naming siddharth gautam only fine so siddharth gautam was so much affected these sights moved him so much that he uh, at once you know decided that he once went out into the world to seek enlightenment. Enlightenment, he wanted to have spiritual knowledge. He was so religious minded suddenly. He felt so bad. He was so, you know, some people are very sensitive to the world. They are never bothering. But there are some people who are so sensitive. So he was very sensitive about this. And finally, he went out for enlightenment concerning the sorrows he had witnessed and why what was the reason of his uh, seeking enlightenment he was so much concerned by seeing the sorrows he was pained himself he wandered for seven years and finally sat down under a peepal tree where he vowed to stay for seven days until enlightenment came so saat saal bhatakne ke baad for seven long years he thought i should sit here this under the peepal tree you might have seen very common pictures if you search on google that a uh, big people tree and uh, Gautam Buddha sitting underneath. Fine. Where he vowed to stay until enlightenment came. He says that Chattak Muje enlightenment nahi milti, the spiritual knowledge nahi milti, that why this the world is suffering, why it is happening, how we can get rid of this pain. You know, a lot of sorrows are there. I will not get up from this tree. Enlightenment after seven days, he renamed the tree, the Bodhi tree, tree of wisdom. So, us tree ko aaj bolte hain, Bodhi tree. Because Gautam Buddha was sitting there. So, this is called the tree of wisdom. And began to teach and to share his new understandings. And then when, and aap knowledge kab share karo ho, when you do have the knowledge, only then you will be able to share it. Fine. So, when he was enlightened, he thought of sharing with other people. At that point, he became known as the Buddha, the awakened or enlightened. Meaning of Buddha here it is, the awakened one who is who is woken up from that dumb, uh, sleep, enlightened. Hai jo. The Buddha preached his first sermon at the city of Benares. That's why the name of the chapter is Sermon at Benares. So, pehla unhone apna jo religious discourse, knowledge sharing ki, religious and spiritual knowledge. That was done at Benares. So that's why the name of the chapter is Sermon at Benares. Most holy of the dipping places on the river Ganges, that sermon has been preserved and is given here. It reflects the Buddha's wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering. Inscrutable, something which cannot be understood, something which cannot be escaped. Clear? So, that sermon was given at Banaras in her grief. So, now better let's talk about Kiza Gautami. Now, before I start, those who are listening to me, kindly send me thumbs up. I would like to see the students who are quite attentive in the class. Jinko abhi tak jo bhi bola hai, samaj me aaya. Aryan, what was the name of Gautam Buddha when he was born as a prince? Aryan. 
Aryan Sarangal, I'm asking you, what is the name? Siddharth. Okay. It's okay. It, uh, you can type in the chat box. Yes, Bism, it is correct. Uh, in the chat box, I got all the answers. Siddharth is the correct answer. Fine. Uh, then I would like to ask which sites moved Siddharth? Which sites, S I G H T S, which sites moved Siddharth? Yes, Hasita, can you answer this? This is sites of suffering. You can type in the chat box also. Yes, sites of suffering. What else exactly? Yes, Tanya would like to speak. Sites of suffering that Siddharth Gautam was moved by were a sick man, then an aged man, a funeral procession, and a monk begging for arms. Very good. You can mute yourself. Fine, so you people are paying attention. This is uh, what my concern is all about, okay? Uh, again, I'm going to share the screen. Please have a look. So he was uh, very much moved by these sites and he decided that I should get enlightenment. I should be awakened. So that's why he, uh, for a wandering after seven years, he sat under the people tree, fine? And then he had enlightenment and then he decided to summonize people. So first, uh, summon, we are going to read about Kisko None Kiya Kiza Gautami. She was the first person to whom he sermonized and why there was need of sermonizing? Chike? Let's read about Kiza Gautami. Kiza Gautami had an only son and he died. In her grief, she carried the dead child to all her neighbors, asking them for medicine and the people said she has lost her senses, the boy is dead. You know, this is what is what very unfortunate lady that she, you know, she had only one family member that was his only son, her only son, and he died. And she was so, you know, moved out of this situation. She carried the dead body of the child to the neighbors. Please give the medicine to this, to my son. But nobody was, you know, paying attention because everybody knows if a person is dead can never come back. She lost her, people started saying she has lost her senses. The boy is dead. Why she's caring? At length, Kiza got me met a man who replied to her request. And he says, okay, I will re reply to your request. I cannot give thee. Thee means you. I cannot give you medicine for your child. Thy child means your child. <coughs> but I know a physician who can. Physician means doctor in, in their world, uh, you can say terminology. And the girl said, pray tell me, sir, who is it? And the man replied, so go to Sakya Muni, the Buddha. Sakya Muni, you can, say the, you can say the monk or the priest, that word. He says, go to Lord Buddha. He can give you the medicine. He said, me repair to the Buddha and cried. She went, repaired means she went. She went to Gautam Buddha and she cried over their Lord and Master, give me the medicine that will cure my boy. The Buddha answered, I want a handful of mustard seed. Mustard seed Mustard seed, you know, use And when the girl in her joy promised to procure it, the Buddha added. She was so happy. She thought only one. One uh, uh, handful of mustard seeds can save my boy. She was so happy. But then Buddha added, mustard seed must be taken from a house where no one has lost a child, fine, a husband, parent, or friend. Sirap ek mustard nahi chahiye, ek mutthi bar mustard nahi chahiye sirap. It is required from the house where there is no loss. Jiske ghar pe koi death nahi hui hai, neither a child nor a husband, neither a parent nor a friend. Then I can help you. Poor Kiza Gautamina went from house to house and the people pitied her. They had, you know, sympathy for her. They said, here is mustard seed, take it. 
but when she asked did a son or daughter a father or mother die in your family they answered her alas the living are few but the dead are many do not remind us of our deepest grief and there was no house but some beloved one had died in it kiza ko sab sab de rahe the everybody was ready to give handful of mustard seed who will not give it's not that costly but the cost of at the cost of that they have not lost anyone it's not possible everybody was saying mustard seeds to le ja but there, there is not you know don't make us remind about the loss of our loved ones kyunki death is inevitable in every family if you look into your own family look here and there in every family one or the other member is gone chahe wo kisi ke grandparents hain kisi ke parents hain kisi ke known hain relatives hain blood relation mein do not remind us of our deepest grief there is no family in which there is no death kiza got me became very very means tired she was so much tired now she kept on roaming here and there for hours she became very and hopeless and sat down at the wayside watching the lights of the city as they flickered up and were extinguished again at last the darkness of the night reigned everywhere this is very beta imagery is used here after getting tired she sat at a place fluctuating lights dekh rahi hai and after fluctuating all those flickering lights suddenly extinguished went out and darkness started prevailing everywhere and she considered the fate of men that their lives flicker up and are extinguished again then she realized the way these lights are flickering our lives are flick, flickering also you know hum kitne zyada you just imagine hum kitne zyada you know proud hi hain we think that we are here for permanent basis as if hamare jaisa koi hai hi nahi hai you know nobody is uh, as if we are going to live forever aise wala attitude hai hamara find if this body is perishable this is just body underneath is soul we are going to die one day this is the bitter reality of our life but nobody is you know thinking like that and we become so adamant and so proudy what pata nahi hum kya cheez hai the end journey is the same for everyone whether you are so rich in your life whether you are not too poor you will die at the same place will be buried or you will be burnt at the same place no difference is there at all jab usne baith ke dekha ki flickering lights then extinguished and darkness ho gayi similarly our lives are flickering and one day darkness will be prevailing and she considered the fate of men and their lives flicker up and are extinguished again and she thought to herself how selfish am i in my grief main apne dukh mein i forgot that how selfish i am becoming death is common to all this is called enlightenment this is called enlightenment and who can help you your guru can help you your elderly people those who have experience any person in your known uh, any guru or any saint or monk or even sometimes you people know some people who are not monk or saints and priests but they do have knowledge they are already enlightened they are knowing the bitter truth of this life they can also guide you so she realized how selfish i am becoming death is common yet in this valley of desolation there is path that leads him to immortality and who has surrendered all selfishness fine so then she realized this is valley of desolation means jahan pe deep sorrow hi hai jab tak life hai tab tak koi na koi problem aayegi life is full of sorrows pain one or the other day you will be facing this thing this is the reality the buddha said ye hai uski first summarizing the life of mortal in this world is trouble and grief and combined with pain for there is not any means by which those who have not been born can avoid dying so this is enlightenment buddha said life of mortals mortals mein jo mar jayenge in this world is trouble jab tak zinda ho then uh, you will be troubled by one or the other thing it is brief life is very short lived and it is full of pain and sorrows and there is no way out that you can escape death there is no way jo jisne janm liya hai usko marna hi hai after reaching old age before reaching old age you have to die there is death of such a nature are living beings this is the part on parcel of life 
as ripe fruits are early in danger of falling so mortals being born are always in danger of death jitna paka phal hota hai utni jaldi wo girta hai the more heavier the fruit becomes more chances of lying down from the tree are there similarly more age we are going we celebrate our birthdays you know that celebrating birthday is good yes we all celebrate we should because god has given this precious life to us but actually this is one day minus of our life every day minus hi ho raha hai jitne bhi aapke time hamara likha hua hai one day minus but we uh, are living as if we are the permanent residents of this earth nobody is permanent resident live your life but accept the harsh realities aap kehte ho na god why me mere sath aisa kyun hua why my life why that person died in my life why that family member died why he is sick why she is sick why this pain to me this is inevitable everybody is one or the kisi ki turn pehle kisi ki baad mein everybody will face one or the other problem in life so ripe fruits early please underline this this is enlightenment ripe fruits are early in danger of falling so mortals when born are always in danger of death as all earthen vessels ye ye hai sermon at banaras ye samjhaya gautam buddha ne all earthen vessels made by the potter and then being broken sab mitti ke bartan toot jayenge everything will be broken at the end of the day so is the life of mortals we all will die one day both young and adult both those who are fools and those who are wise all fall into the power of death all are subject to death nobody can escape death of those who overcome by death depart from life a father cannot save his son nor kinsmen their relations kinsmen means relatives relatives cannot save their relations mark while relatives are looking on and lamenting deeply one by one mortals are carried off like an ox that is laid to slaughter so the world is afflicted with death and decay therefore the wise do not grieve knowing the terms of the world according to gautam buddha in this paragraph he is saying that ab socho zara jo quote maine aapko dikhaya tha he has the most who is most content with the least aaya samajh mein ab the most that person is having who is most content with the least whatever least you are having in your life that is enough jitna zyada you will be attached to materials the more you will attach to the people more suffering will dawn upon you the less attached you will be to the materialistic things to the uh, clothing to the people find more pain will definitely come upon you when you are wise when you understand uh, the reality of life and you are smart enough to manage this thing only then your life will be better than others clear so always remember this quote of buddha he has the most who is most content with the least that is inevitable nobody can escape it okay have a nice day beta